this is Band of Seahorses, my favorite band in Green Bay. And uh, that's Chris and Melanie, my good friends, who played this track live at the Farmer's Market Battle of the Bands on uh, Wednesday night, which I don't know when this is going to be released, but that happened to be August 26th. So, most importantly, I have... My arch nemesis, <laughs> Mr. Terry Taylor, Whoa. here today. So thanks for being here. And this was short notice for him, even though this is going to come out like a month from now. This he, he agreed to it with less than 24 hours notice. Yeah, I was at Title Town when you sent the message to me. So, so kudos I, to their skills for over real? there. Yeah, yeah. For real? Actually, I was at a meeting with uh, Brian Danzinger. So... Imagine that. Yes. Yes, I think. Did, did, you, who, did, who did, did you tell him that he had to be here to be on? No, no. I yeah. assumed you'd talk to him. Not yet. Oh. He's intimidating. Really? Very much so, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, give me the... Uh, Hand signals? I the, don't think they'll see. Yeah, them. I know. So, that, that, was, that, that, was, <laughs> that was an honor of Brian because, you know, he does this impression on me. Ah, yeah. yes. So, tell me about yourself. Oh my goodness! What do you want to know? I want to know uh, the you know the the abridged version of before I knew you. Ooh, that's there's no such thing as abridged. I would say the best way to describe me is you know a dude, a beer, and a joy for life. <laughs> okay, so that's a wrap. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you are from Upper Michigan. Yep, yep. Uh, born and raised in Marquette, Michigan. Uh, left a long time ago. Uh, great place to visit. Loved the summers there. Uh, the people are wonderful. And you could not pay me to live there in the winters any longer. Um, people love it. The snowmobiling, the skiing, um, the long, vicious, cold, mean nights <laughs> during the winters. Um, but it's a wonderful place to be from. A, I always there's a saying up there that there are more artists and musicians per square foot out of the UP than any other place, and the reason is there's just not much to do those long winter nights. There's another saying, but I won't use it because we're going to stay family orientated. Oh, we don't have to. This oh, is actually don't. marked explicit in the iTunes. Oh wow! Yeah. So uh, as of uh, a few weeks ago, we're in iTunes and we're in Stitcher Radio, and we are on the interwebs so it is accessible i, I know you think it's going to be a big deal coming up i, I, I think it's a fad but I've we'll heard, see i heard from scott eastman that it's going to be kind of well big. yeah if you heard from scott yeah and uh so i know some people didn't know that so you can go to ideas by and you can you can you can play this episode <laughs> yes thank you for pointing at me when you say some people didn't know we were online live yet yes i i understand that now i don't know i don't know <laughs> I, I i thought we were friends I don't know. Whoa. Went, just, right, went right to the friend thing. Nick, Nick just Jeez. gave me a shoulder shrug. He means Facebook friends. <laughs> right. Well, that's what this is. This you is, are Facebook friends, right? These are just my Facebook friends we're talking to. So far. That's so who far. these people are. I mean. So that's how they started. I don't know right? if you recall that, but I, you know, I, I was, uh, I, I moved to Michigan for a short time and I, uh, I was looking at my Facebook friend list and I'm like, um, I, I don't really know some of these people really well. And the ones that I, I feel like I do know well, I don't get to spend enough time with. So I don't know where you fit into that, I but here really you are. I really figured when I opened up a brewery that you and I would start spending a lot of time together. But we'll see where it plays out. You know, I'm still you, you new, got, new at this particular game. You got busy. Uh, it happens. I hate when that happens. Every once in a while, life happens, right? Yeah. So uh, give me a, an interesting anecdote from uh, the UP. You, you tell amazing stories. <laughs> oh, but my son's going to be listening. Now no. he's, he just left for college, and I'm oh. not sure I want him to know these stories. So so he's in college. You think he's going to sit around listening to his dad talk on? Yeah, good point. Hey, yeah. Come on. He's got better things to do. In five years, maybe. Yeah. Um, here Here's a cultural difference. So is Michael here? Because could I put him on instead? He would be funnier. Well, he's far funnier. Oh, yes. Yes, more intelligent and can outrun his old man. So he's... <laughs> but... So back to the story that I interrupted. Sorry. That wasn't that good. No, feel free to interrupt. 
<laughs> he is no fun at all. No fun at all. No. When I graduated high school, Marquette uh, is a very small town, about 25,000 people, but there's only one high school. And there's about, I think it's down to about 1,500 students now, but it was about 18 to 1,900 students. So we had a large graduating senior class. We literally called the police up. And we said, listen, we're going to have our senior party out on the beach, Shores of Lake Superior, and there's going to be about 500 kids there, and we're going to have half barrels and everything else. And they said, that's fine. We'll have a couple of extra patrols in the area. Nobody drives. And so some of the people from the student council met you when you went into the beach, you know, because there was a little parking area, took your keys away, and if you had even one drink, you did not get your keys back. So we had designated drivers took you back or you spent the night on the beach nowadays if you tried something like that oh, SWAT can't. would show up uh, FBI every police agency that wants to get on the TV uh, it would be just ridiculous but the funny thing was nobody ever got hurt you know there was an intelligence and a maturity back then because it was expected and now I think kids that's being robbed from them I agree yeah um so, uh, let's talk about more fascism. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Says the libertarian, <laughs> yes. I'm a, I'm a softened libertarian. Ah, well, you know. I've, I've, had some of my, age, I've had some of my corners, you know. Rounded a little rounded bit. Rounded a little yeah, bit. The old joke, uh, libertarian highway is a, nothing but a field. Oh, finally, yeah. finally come to roost on you? Or? Uh, no, it would be privatized. <sighs> Yeah, let's talk privatization and how that's absolutely ruined the country. So you work for a public institution right now? Uh, at this particular time, no. But I'm talking about the privatization of the public education system. I'm talking about the privatization of prisons, how they want to privatize uh, Social Security, all, all that. Yeah. Basically just gutting the uh, next generation. Hmm. How's that for a hand grenade? Go ahead. Run with it, Libertarian. Run. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I thought we were closer together than that, but, you know, we're pretty divergent there. I uh, I think that uh, it's a lot more complicated than that. I don't think just having – just because it's a public school doesn't make it better than a private school. Well, I agree, but when you take the resources out of a public school, um, what's left for the people that are remain – remained behind is not the educational experience that you're sure. getting. I mean, we've really gutted. So that is something that, that that's one of those areas where my corners have been rounded a little bit. Uh, I do believe there's a, uh, a need to force education on those unwilling to accept it. I do. Um, and I, I don't know how to do that, though. My brother was on. You should listen to that episode. It was really good. He was a charter school teacher down in Milwaukee. Oh, and, wow. Hey, that's And, great. I mean, they did everything short of handing cash to kids. And they don't want to learn. There are, there are some, there's some serious issues there. And that was a, that's a public school. It's well, not a yeah. private, it, you know, and they're, they're even doing the charter thing where it's different. So it gets complicated. And I don't, you know what, one thing I do realize is I don't have all the answers to all of that. I don't know what to do about that. I don't know how it really got to that point, And I certainly don't know how to unravel that it's super hard. It is a very complex problem, and it's not a problem you can just flip a light switch. No. Ain't, nobody's going to come along and say, I have the solution, and the light switch is thrown, and all of a sudden we have a educated populace, and you know we start making intelligent right. decisions. Well, even if they did. PR-driven decisions. It's going to be an investment, and it's going to be, I'll say, multi-generational. Uh, yeah, at this point it has to be, and getting people that are uh, of diverse political ideology to – allow that to even happen you know there isn't going to be a simple answer there can't be so it, yeah so uh you know democracy is great <laughs> i you know what it's your show i would like to talk about more about, more about you than than the universe but uh you know it's your show you get to do it what you want um it's my universe it, it, well uh so that's going to come at two o'clock we're going to talk about the universe with meg Oh, she's so an astrophysicist. It would, it would, oh, then I'll just stop. Or, 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 <laughs> or you know what? Can I, I be a metaphysicist? Uh, well, I think you already are. Oh, 
right? That those I'm, are... I'm just glad I was sitting down when I use that big word. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think the, the only metaphysicist I know is uh, Doctor Strange from the comic books, right? He's a metaphysicist, I think, or a mystic. I think he's a mystic. I don't know the difference. I don't either. <laughs> but I had to go back to like when I was knee high to remember who Doctor Strange was. They're so. gonna have a movie. Yes, I know. Oh, I know that, yeah. okay. <laughs> so uh, you were in the UP. You yep. uh, had a, a drunken high school party that didn't get busted, and then you uh, teleported to Green Bay. Mm, close. I went over and lived in Belgium for a while mm. and drank a whole lot of beer. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an amazing, eye-opening experience because back then you had Miller, you had Miller Light, you had Budweiser and Bud Light, whatever bar you went to. And you go over there, and every village has multiple breweries, and the breweries are doing multiple lines. And so for a little kid from Marquette, Michigan, to go over there and just enjoy (laughs) several years of uh, time over there, it was an amazing experience. So um, I think all of the guests I've had, paradoxically, I think I drank the least. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> isn't there a concept i have to approaching think, affinity i have to think about that but yes. <laughs> I, I think that might actually be the case no I, uh so and well you, oddly enough actually even though i own a small little microbrewery yeah. and all jokes aside i i drink less beer now that i'm brewing it sure than i have in years yeah well yeah i think that's a consequence of that because you want to you're testing for the taste yes so yes. yeah. even though, and instead of sitting down and drinking a beer, right, you just have one like drink, and then you're moving the process. And as you know, with uh, I just got some new equipment in from Germany, so you know that took me. I was brewing all night long to five o'clock in the morning. So talk about that. Um, Tell me about the German I, equipment. I, I just did. Well, more. Like, <laughs> so how how much can you brew, and what's the what's your process like? Because we had we had the the Title Town girls on. Uh, just the other day and so they were talking about some of the the uh, yes <laughs> processes the processes thank you that's uh, the yeah. word yeah process <laughs> sorry again the title town probably goes through more beer cleaning out their equipment than I brew my total capacity is about well, I think I can turn 600 gallons a week now, I'm only selling currently in two uh, locations, um, connections on George Street and Rum Runners in De Pere and Green Bay. Uh, just hired a salesperson and trying to get out there a little bit more, self-distribute. The hardest part about starting up a microbrewery when you're not specifically aligning yourself with a restaurant is the economies of scale. I mean, when I first started to buy a, a case of bottles, 15 bucks to buy... Um, well, if you bought a thousand six pack holders, they were two bucks each. So a case is eight bucks right there. So you got 23 bucks. Your labels are 60, 70 cents, but round down to 50. So there's 12. And all of a sudden, even before you start brewing, you've got $30 in for a case. Wow. Yeah. And then you got your time and you've got, oh, and caps and you've got your actual ingredients and everything else. So in order to really start, I mean, it takes a lot of money. I mean, you just, to go from a microbrewery, to go from home brewing to a microbrewery, you either buy a bunch of equipment or you lose a lot of money in the beginning. And then, you know, I'm finally to the point where I can start ordering, you know, pallets of cases and a pallet's 109 empty cases and you get price breaks and, and it's still expensive for a small company such as myself. Right. Right. And well, and now there's greater competition, so you can't necessarily. Yeah, but the Green Bay market is just wonderful. I mean, I I initially went and bought uh, when Von Steel Winery, they have their brewery, Onopy Brewery. When they were growing, I went and bought their old brewery, their old equipment and moved it out to Denmark. Um, Fascinating story about government regulation when you try to move a brewery into a zoned agricultural area. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyways, sounds like you don't like that. It was a very educational experience but you know they they assign somebody to help you with it and that helps uh just as a sidetrack what happens with the spent grains they were very concerned about how i was going to recycle them and all of a sudden i was going to have to hire somebody and come out and have a recycling area and i'm 
getting quotes and it's forty thousand dollars and all this stuff. So I went on. Um, the, I'm a member of the Master Brewers Association of the Americas, and I went on a uh, um, a, t- a chat and I said, "What are you guys doing? I know you know there's got to be other people that are having this problem. Yeah, you know, in the city, for some reason, restaurants can get away with it, but." And they said, well, that's easy. Just tell me, you know, you're giving it to a local farmer. A farmer picks it up. You know, I can look out my back window. I got Jim mm-hmm. and Josie Warvenick, and they got 100 head of cattle. Sure, <laughs> you know? sure. So, so I had, like, multiple phone calls, and all of a sudden we're, I'm on this one phone call with my uh, rep at the uh, uh, with the government, and I said, by the way, I got cattle farmers in my backyard, and that's what I'm going to do with the spent grain. Okay. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so, so why all, why would all, that even be a question? Uh, well, like what else in, would you do in with a, it? In a way, it's great that they're trying to make sure that you know you're not just poisoning. You know, you got gray waters, you got uh, spent grains, and all that. You're not just you know throwing all the bleaches because their brewing is 80, 75 to eighty percent cleaning. I mean, you have to be amazingly meticulously yeah. clean. So it's okay to feed the grain to cattle, but not. Well, the grain, yes, yes, but you know, with okay. the runoff, I had to make sure I had every, I met all the. Uh, sure. Well, that makes sense. But the grain was the part that was not handled by the, you know, getting some of these contractors in okay. helping me out. I would never, I would never guess any of that. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. How far back do you want to go? You want to go back to when I was in Belgium hanging out? <laughs> uh, well, of course, I love those stories. There, you, you, there, there, there were some. Uh, I was in a bathroom. Star- I don't know, whatever. I, I remember some of those. But uh, no, I was, uh, I, I, I was uh, trying to formulate a question because uh, you said the Green Bay market is great. And- ah, yes. Um, all the brewers really are looking to make this a destination point for microbrewing. I mean, they, they get together. Um, I missed the last round, so I'm not fam- that familiar with the details, but they all get together with a single recipe and then put their own spin on it. They create their own, you know, their version, and then they market it out at all the area places. Just about uh, all the local breweries have asked to put, you know, ours on tap also. So just a great, uh, let's you know get our hands dirty together and let's let's get this accomplished rather than the oh no you know you're going to steal my piece of the pie no they're saying let's invest in this area and let's make this a very large pie that we all can do well in so um just absolutely love seeing that you know as you know i've been on multiple businesses in the Mm -hmm. area and up north also and anytime you get everyone pulling together it makes it so much better yeah, I, I've been, I've owned bars and that too, where they get kind of very competitive, and I've never really understood that. No. Yeah, I when I uh, bought the old Chatterhouse building in De Pere and put new roof, new HVC, and uh, refurbed it. I initially, you know, was setting it up, and I went to a lot of the other bars, and they were very defensive. And it's kind of like, guys, what can we do to get people onto this side of the, you know, De Pere? What can we do to bring them from Green Bay to De Pere? How can we establish De Pere as the place to go? And we got St. Norbert's here. We got all kinds of things going on. But, you know, they, there, there were certain people that got it. And to this day, I enjoy working with them. And there was a couple that didn't. And, I'm not surprised, you know, they're not there anymore. Oh, right. So right. You, when you look at some of the businesses, you go, well, that's been two, three bars in the past five years. You can tell the ones that are playing together and, you know, working and, you know, contributing to the community. And you can tell the ones that are just, just don't get it. So uh, I had Scott Eastman on last week and um, very early on when I was in business, um, he, he's much wiser than I am. And he actually brought some of his coworkers over at a business expo to talk to me. And I was shocked uh, mm-hmm. because there wasn't this camaraderie. And now there is, you know, in, in the stuff I do and, you know, building websites and building apps and, you know, doing web marketing. All There's a, a, there's a, a really good group of people that really kind of collaborate and a help each community. other out. A good community. Yeah. Uh, nothing like the, 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 the brewers in the area though like it's phenomenal i really think it's uh that you have something really awesome there yeah. well you know I, I i don't mean to keep talking about title town but you're good friends with brent and you know my son's home after a sophomore year of college and he's going to concordia as a graphic artist you know half his class is up at concordia half down at milwaukee uh, institute of art and design Sophomore year, you're starting that junior year. Yeah, you still got two years, and he's kind of, oh, geez. And 
I, I kind of recognize that because you know I've been in management for a million and a half years, and you see that look. And it's like, all right, how can I get him really fired up about this? And you were kind enough to get uh, together with Brent, and Brent took my son because you know we're starting. I just over. asked him. Yeah, well, oh, kudos <laughs> to you for asking him, but you know. Huge kudos to uh, Brent, too. Absolutely. 45 yeah. minutes of his time on a busy day. Michael said that they were slammed. He, Brent took 45 minutes of his time, showed my son every aspect of his brewery, and Michael came back and was re-energized. You know, he, he, he wanted to work in the brewery. He was helping, you know, doing the beer labels. He's doing the website. He does all that for us. But the energy level was, you know, amped. You know, he, it was amped to 11 there for a while. And it's like, wait, wait, come on, come on back, come on back. But, um, yeah, he, he just did a great job. And I think that's a perfect example, you know, yeah. investing in the community. Um, well, I mean, so Brent's been asked to be on the show. so And he said, I have to talk to his assistant. So now I've been, uh, Ooh. <laughs> I've been knocked down. All right, we can cut that part. No, 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 no. I, uh yeah uh i think the world of him and uh and uh to to second what scott said um about brent if uh you know in 100 years there isn't a bridge or a building named after brent weicker then we miss the boat that's scott said that yeah that's and, huge uh, praise and deserved yeah. And yeah. deserved. uh yeah um he is uh he's the president of green bay <laughs> so we have Mayor Schmidt and we have President Brent. Well, we, we, we know who's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> he who holds the beer is in charge. <laughs> now you know my secret plan. <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, so tell me more about your brewery. We didn't actually even uh, name it by name, I don't think. We have not. Okay. So, well, so again, it's mysterious. It's, yes. I named it after the Chatterhouse building because I wanted to connect with the uh, De Pere and the history and everything else. So it's called the Chatterhouse Brewery. Talk briefly about that. Ooh, What's the, what, what is that? Oh, Give a little history yeah, about that. Oh, uh, the Chatterhouse bu- uh, was built in 1893 and opened as the restaurant, the Chatterhouse, and was running continuously as a restaurant um, and still is. It needed a little TLC. You know, there was. I saw. Yeah, yeah. And so we did a lot of work. Um, what was And really the Ghostbusters. Fun. And the Ghostbusters, yes. Amelia. Amelia was opening and closing doors and scaring the crap out of people. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure if she's still there or not, but uh, they still tell stories. So. Yeah, it was it was actually a fun project. I mean, in the main dining area, we ripped up the carpet and there was glue and paint and everything else, and we sanded that down. And there was beautiful bird's it is beautiful. eye maple. Yeah, yeah. And so I just put a nice coat over top of it, and yeah, I left it as was. Um, it was unrecognizable once you took over. Well, thank you, thank you. In a good way. Yeah, thank you. I jumped to the conclusion that was a compliment, but you know, I, I appreciate. Well, be, be, before you, before you you kind of slipped one in there, oh. your self deprecation. Uh, I, I study at the feet of the master, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it's getting thick. Yes. <laughs> we marked it E. <laughs> I thought the E was for me, but it means explicit. Ah. Uh, yeah, just in case, you know, because uh, I, I want people to be comfortable and candid. So sometimes uh, some things, uh, things slip out, some words slip out. And I oh, don't words, wanna, yes. And yes. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true. Today has been decreed a yes. pan, pantsless day. And I literally have my kilt. Actually, it's Phil Danen's kilt. Phil Danen from De Pere. Nice. Yes, yes. I was, does he know you're going to be wearing it? Uh, I don't think he knows exactly how often <laughs> and what... I'm doing online with his kilt, but <laughs> so there was this website that got hacked. Was that part of that whole thing? Were you in that? Which one? The Ashley Madison. Um, actually, I am one of the first stockholders in that. <laughs> <laughs> that I would believe. So... <laughs> you must be crying at night because they're they're not long for this world. Oh. Don't get me going on that. I won't. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. It, before anyone listening, you can go ahead and Google it. No, I was not on there. No. So. But, well, it turns out, at least people are claiming that some people have stolen identities and, and were on there. I'm sure, what was it, 30 million people are yeah, right. claiming <laughs> Oh, those guys at work. They're so, so silly. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> oh, it's funny. 
Oh. oh. I think we were getting uh we were getting transmissions from Mars for a second. No, that's cool. Oh, you heard that too? I yes. <laughs> <laughs> well that 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 makes well, it even weirder. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys. No, that, no. That was all me. Yeah, no. nor- normally this time of day my uh voices Maybe are all at lunch. So those might I be I heard ch- one in the back of my head. I said, oh, no. I think those were the Chatterhouse ghosts. Ah, yes. So, uh any more about the building? You renovated, cleared the f- cleaned the floors, yep, made had, it amazing. Had some tenants in there, things kind of went south. Got a new tenant, um Dale and his son Ken. Dale worked for me for years over at AT&T. <laughs> And he eventually retired and was looking for something to do. And right when he retired, I had uh, the vacancy there. And his son had just gotten back from uh, his second tour in Iraq. And it's kind of like, guys, you know, what do you think? And they were all over it, and they loved it. So they've been in there for about a year and a half now, a little shy of a year and a half. And, you know, they're real happy. Hard to believe it's that long. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Time flies. Yeah. Um, So the brewery. What the heck made what the heck made you decide to do that? I still really don't know. Well, for multiple reasons I retired about 2 years ago. <laughs> and when you retire in your 40s, you think this is going to be cool. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then after you've watched all the uh, Law and Order New York episodes or CSI New York episodes on Lifetime Network or whatever, you think, this isn't cool. <laughs> so I was looking for something to do. And again, going back to, well, my father brewed beer. I literally, in kindergarten for show and tell, took a bottle, a cap, and a bottle capper and for show and tell showed how to cap beer hmm. so i mean it's in my family's history uh, i grew up i don't think it. you ever told me that that's a great story oh thanks yeah yeah if we are uh you know hurting for time i'll tell it again <laughs> 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 but anyways uh and then like i said that whole the years i lived in belgium and traveled throughout europe uh, just that love was there and i thought you know i haven't brewed in a while and so i got my stuff out and i started brewing i said you know i've got the time i could start my own brewery and then me being me i said huh i could really make a good business out of this and in my world being you know a good business means i'm going to throw a lot of money at it and lose lose most of it anyways yeah (laughs) well it seems uh capital intensive at least to get started oh very much so yes um everything's stainless steel everything's uh, perfect case in point. I was looking at uh, getting a used manual canning equipment and used manual four cans at a time where you mm-hmm. put the four cans in, it fills them, and then uh, slaps the top on them. It was $72,000. And that was, that was the best deal I could find. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it gets expensive. Um, the equipment from Germany, and then you can always get the Chinese versions, and so you're always looking at quality, you're looking at price. It, it, every business person, and every business I've ever been in, you always have to look at value, price. You know, In my case, I've gotten to the point where I recognize that if I don't spend the money up front, I'm going to spend it several times over on the back end. Sure, so, sure. Yeah, I've tried to do it right. I've tried to grow organically. Like I said, um, used the... Uh, Connections at George Street, my old, the old Chatter House, for a lot of my experimentation. So thanks, guys. Really appreciate that. Um, recipe testing, you know, finding out what was good. You know, what we call our Chatter House Ale was probably the third iteration. Um, the bourbon barrel. Uh, oh, so good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the 1893. And you know, where to buy the bourbon barrels. Believe it or not, we're really lucky here in Wisconsin. Breeze, uh, where I get all my... Uh, ingredients from is in chilton wisconsin and yet they're known throughout the united states as the best grains to get Mm. and i can just get in my car and go get them um the barrel exchange is in mequon wisconsin so i can go get my oak barrels you know the bourbon barrels in mequon wow that's amazing the the how we've been kind of the epicenter and now we're just actually opening up our own microbreweries right but I did hear that uh, Wisconsin has more brewery permits than any other state in the country right now. So we're on the cusp of an explosion. Really? Yeah, it's going to be good. Wow. Yeah. Maybe not as a business owner. It's going to be good as a business owner. But, you know, 
as a beer drinker and just an aficionado of the craft, it's going to be real good. Yeah. So, um, uh, tell me some of your, your, uh, brands, your types, your flavors. (laughs) (laughs) Well, right now we're running, uh, the 1893, which is a bourbon barrel ale. We're also running the chatter house. What's everybody else going to drink? Yes. Yes. Well, you know, (laughs) Those barrels cost about a little <laughs> over 200 bucks each. <laughs> I have to age them. Uh, the yeah. last batch I aged 62 days. Wow. Yeah, and I've got one that I'm going to I'm going to do for a year. And then I'll taste it. If it's any good, then I'll sell it. But uh, that's part of the fun, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also have the De Pere draft, which is our basic draft. And then we've always had one that we've kind of rotated through. I did some German sours, um, a Czech ale. Uh Still trying to figure out exactly what we're going to do with that fourth brand. Um, but you know me. Somebody told me they didn't like my Berlin or Pilsner, so I went flew over to Berlin and tried it. Who said that? Um, some I was sitting in uh, Connections, and guy says, ah, it's much better over there. And so four days later, I was in Berlin. <laughs> I said, ah, I'll check this out myself. <laughs> Is that really why you went? That was last March. I know. March. I know you went, but... Well, I had... Yeah, one of my former exchange hours, I've had 12 exchange kids, and she was graduating, and I thought, yeah, two birds, one stone. Nice. And then I actually saw two other of my former exchange students, and I was really flattered. One from, she's a engineer for Volkswagen, and she actually made her fiancé come to Dusseldorf um, just so I could meet him. So Excellent. these kids, like I said, I've had 12 um, from all over the world, and these kids are just phenomenal and really become part of your family. Now, we had one, you know, you don't always click with all kids. All mm-hmm. kids don't always click with you, and we had one that didn't click with us. But uh, like I said, we've had 12 full-year kids that are uh, very lucky and very uh, blessed to be part of my family still. Matter of fact, we had one from Hong Kong. Our, my last name, Taylor, is now her legal middle name, Union Taylor Lam. Wow. Yeah. And, well, I've been sitting with you at the bar sometimes, and you get whatever. You get, you're get. you showing me Facebook messages and text messages. and. Oh, that's the main reason I got on Facebook yeah. was simply because I've got these kids all over the world and just keeping in contact with them and you know, their families and the, keeping them up, up to date on everything that's going on here still. And, you know, just absolutely love it for that reason. Yeah, that's amazing. So that, that's something that I've always kind of wanted to do, but it seems like a, just a, a big undertaking. It's so. a commitment. A lot yeah. of people, it's funny, you can always tell when somebody's got their first exchange student because mm-hmm. like the first two weeks they're showing them off like there's something they just bought. Hey, look yeah. what I've got. And then right. it's like, okay, you have a teenager in your house. Wait. Right. And, hormones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, it, you literally have somebody living with you right. for a year. So you don't you can't treat them as anything other than part of the family. Yeah. Cuz as soon as you do, it's going to it's it's going to just go. It's going to break down. So I should throw plates at them and uh I think that would be yeah, I'll, I'll, just like a, just like a normal family. Yeah. yeah. And uh make them sleep out on the deck. Oh, you still do that. <laughs> Max? I, I did notice that Max is not here right now. <laughs> is he out on the deck? Uh, he, is he, he catching a nap? He, he may be. <laughs> Oddly <laughs> enough, he did go outside for something. <laughs> so I don't know. I, well, I think he was trying to record quietly because oh. he wants to have some music for the next episode. Okay. So I think he's trying uh, to do that. I'm not good enough for his music. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, well, he doesn't want to interrupt you. He, I, don't know, I don't know why, but he has a lot of respect for you. Horses. That's the reason. Horses. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You do have horses. So, um, did we did we cover everything with uh, Chatterhouse Brewery? How would oh, somebody yeah, get in yeah. touch with you? Um, or do you not want them to get in touch with you? Are you over capacity? I don't know where you're at right now. Well, with the new equipment that I got in from Germany right now, um, and I've done the break-ins with it, getting it, everything all set up and getting it the way I want, and it's amazing, the computer technology that's involved. But uh, yes, we, are, we have ramped up per, uh, our production, uh, hired Michelle Slice. So the basic way to get a hold of us is via either the website, chatterhousebrewery.com, or on Facebook. Again, Chatterhouse Brewery. Okay. So. And so what kinds of places would you be looking to, to get? 
through there. Yeah, we can sell to any place that's a bar or a liquor store, any place that can sell to an individual. I can't sell to you. I cannot okay. sell to an individual. But you can, I can give only, it to me. Well, the, what do you think's on the table? <laughs> <laughs> so any bar? Any, 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 yeah. any place that can sell directly to the consumer, I can sell to. Okay. Now, the hope is once we get big enough, then... Uh, actually, all three distributors, local distributors, have mentioned that they would like to start carrying it because we're craft beer. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully they think that I'm doing a really good job because they have come in and I have sat with them as they've tasted it. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. Um, when I ramp up production enough, then you know we would like to go that route. You don't tend but to do they, things halfway. So. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes not. So you have any on your wish list where you'd like to see it? Not I, yet? It, not really. I don't have a specific place. Okay. Um, you know, the bottle room, there's, there's a couple of places. Um, at this point, you know, Rum Runners has done a great job. Uh, really want to give them a shout out for how they've helped. Um, any place that really appreciates craft beer. I don't want to be at a place where, you know, it's like, oh yeah, we're carrying this because it's local, or we're carrying this because you know we knew we know Terry, or we know Michelle. Mm-hmm. Just if you got somebody, I don't care how the volume you do. If you got somebody who's going to like it, yeah, you know, let's talk. Yeah, well, those rum runners guys, they're the same. They uh, they don't do things halfway. They uh, knock it out of the park. They have events oh, every yeah. night. It's oh. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, they're doing a great job. They have really they're... kind of revitalized that place. So. Uh, gonna uh, take a little sort of a break to uh, thank Camera Corner Studios. Thank you, Camera Corner Studios. And uh, so, what I've been doing, and you know, whatever, it's been uh, you know hit or miss a little bit. But uh, uh, I think uh, I think Terry, uh, as a business person, will will have some good insights here. Uh, so I've been asking my guests to you know tell my listeners, all seven of them. I think we're up to seven or eight. I don't know. I I think there's a survey <laughs> that shows a few more than that. <laughs> and uh, so is, is he in double digits already? Yeah, it's I, a, it's I like, think he's in triple digits. It's like at this eleven. Point. Or I might get nervous. So uh, if you could just uh, you know give your impression of of what what what's going on here, is it what you expected? Is it you know just off the top of your head? Because I what I'm what I'm trying to do is to. Um, I think make people understand because the intention here is, uh, and Nick will correct me if I'm wrong, but um, get more smaller people with smaller budgets to come in and do pieces of their, you know, pieces of their marketing. They have video. They mm-hmm. obviously have audio equipment, all all good to go. They have expertise. So, give me your take. Do you have a take of your podcast or of the facility? Uh, of the facility. This is oh, all this about is, them. Yeah, this is absolutely awesome. When I first walked in, I said, "Whoa, this is a lot more than I thought." This is professional grade, you know. Uh, Nick over there is doing an outstanding job, and he, kind of, he he coached me, so I really appreciate that because I needed some coaching. <sighs> Just kidding. <laughs> I was about to correct for that. That, that one was for you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. No, um, yeah, this is the type of place that uh, is a hidden gem, and we should make sure that it's not hidden for too much longer. Yeah, this really has the uh, capability of, you know. It, helping the area and helping the people in the area so it's been huge to me uh i know you you saw like my original facebook post it was sort of mm-hmm. just i wasn't drinking but i was you know only half serious at the yes. time uh well i mean i'm not gonna be uh you know sober forever but <laughs> um but the uh the response was amazing and i think nick did a a phenomenal job of like seeing of envisioning something that I didn't even envision and said hey do you have a podcast studio and of course the answer is <laughs> going to be um, what are you talking about uh, so, kudos to you Nick yeah well, thank for, you. for real yeah. um, you know uh, and this is exactly why I want to do this is because I have friends that I, I I know that I don't know all of their talents and Nick is one of those guys so yeah. Yeah, that's one of the reasons, as you know, I'm on the executive uh, yeah. board for the De Pere Chamber of Commerce. That's why I love this area. You know, I've moved away. I've moved down to Alabama. I've moved to North Carolina. Like I said, I've lived overseas. Always come back to this area. There's always people with these, you know, hidden pockets of talent and willing to help each other, you know, work with each other. And I love that about the Midwest. I love that about the Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan area. 
Yeah. So it's been pretty great. Um, so you have anything to throw in there, Nick? No, just uh, want to remind everybody that we're here if you need us, whether yeah. you're a photographer that, you know, is just looking for a place to shoot or you need a full online live streaming broadcast to showcase your new beer, maybe. <laughs> Whatever the case Great may idea. be. <laughs> we can help you at Camera Corner Studios, uh, 406 North Monroe. Uh, available by appointment only you can call me at 920-272-0148 nice um so i mean i I know we kind of phoned that in because this will be our our least listened to episode i mean probably by far feeling the love (laughs) (laughs) so uh, i'm bringing the international contingent in so when you're looking at your international number right that's That's true true. think of all the foreign exchange students that are going to be listening to this (laughs) 12 buddy (laughs) and their families Um, so double your listening that could be like 25 people (laughs) my goodness okay so you know i'm sure being the person that you are a lot of people have volunteered to be on this and i know with your charisma and the way you're going about this you probably already have a a lot of listeners so well it's uh it was surprising like i for real i i I still view this as like being in the beta testing mode uh thank you for bringing me in so yeah i appreciate that you know and i like i said before i can't win can't win (laughs) if i bring people in too early if i bring people in too late can't win can't win you know they either got to be first or last i think it's like the late night talk shows right you either want to be on the first episode or the last episode yeah i'm good right now thanks yeah um i I don't know when the last one will be it's gonna be a ways out we're uh got somebody uh said book me for october that's true so speaking of which you know uh you should also mention that people can buy october uh true you should mention that uh well, this might not play till October. So, but then so we somebody can buy me. Uh, well, awesome. So, uh, yeah. So, thank you, Nick. Wow. <laughs> Nick, 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 all business. Nick is all business. Done this before. Yeah. And uh, so, I did put out a, uh, and maybe I don't know when this is going to go out exactly. I was thinking it would be October, but you know, we'll have to look at the schedule again. But uh, for the month of October. Uh, there's four Wednesdays, so there'll be four episodes most likely. And right now I have an eBay auction out there where hopefully a local business, but you know, I'll, you know, I'm open-minded to, to whatever, uh, I'm kind of auctioning off the sponsorship. So very great idea. Very uh, cool. Yeah. And I did this claim. It can't be illegal in Wisconsin. So that's really my only rule. So I, you know, I'm not going to have uh, whatever, something that's not legal here. That would be silly. Um, but I, I'm very open-minded to that. And I think that the the type of people that would actually, you know, be willing to, right now it's at $26. That's a pretty awesome deal. That's like a. That's, know. yeah, that's because you're just starting. Well, I, I just put it up late last night. So <laughs> I put it up after you agreed to 11, to, to 11.30. Ah, okay. So, yeah. Um, so it's down to 25 now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that you can do that. You probably you probably can. I think you can back out a bit, but uh, no, I think uh, I think once they hear you, they're gonna it's gonna go up a notch for real. Um, and uh, and I will have you back as a guest host because uh, you you have charisma, but you have more With than a that. Capital K. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and more than that, though, there's uh, kindness. With a capital oh. C. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was clever. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I try. Um, so uh, you were talking about the De Pure Chamber of Commerce, and oh yeah, um, I. So we only have a couple hours here with you today. Uh, so, but uh, yeah. just share share a piece of some of the things that you do to give back to the community. Oh, I would rather talk about like Cheryl Dietrich and what a force she is. That's I mean, also fine. She, she is amazing. Um, eats, sleeps, lives the De Pere Chamber. Uh, yeah. Works nonstop for them. Uh, it was because of her influence that that was one of the places I looked at and why I ended up buying, well, not the exact reason, but why I was looking in De Pere when I found the Chatter House. Um, and her dedication is you know one of the reasons i'm on the board because we're all very busy mm-hmm. um yeah we've got guys like um chris knight uh, jim deliers i mean we've got some people down there that you know they're big hitters i'm, I'm just a little guy then yeah, you know, that 
I'm the voice for the little guy on that board, and you look at some of the heavy hitters on that. Um, but because of her and the way she does things and her dedication, you know, we're all contributing. And I think the pier is much better for her five, no, eight years that she's been there now. So she's just phenomenal. And we all know Allison just left the definitely, uh, definitely De Pere. So I think she's going to be pulling up some of that slack too until they find a uh, replacement and that replacement gets up to speed. Mm -hmm. So a lot going on in De Pere right now. Mm -hmm. So I can have them on. I am more interested in you though, really. Mm, I'm going to rephrase that. <laughs> I think that this, th this kilt is for decoration <laughs> only. <laughs> I think that when people see Terry Taylor's name on the episode, they want to know about you. So, so uh, I'm going to rephrase that. You so say? that it's, it's my universe. So that it's, it, it is your show, but I'm going to oh. re-ask the question so that uh, I don't let you off the hook that easy. So, what are some of your uh, the the like the philanthropic accomplishments that you're most proud of i think that's a fair oh, question well i'd say the thing i'm most proud of um well there's a bunch but i think the one that we kicked off um dancing for kids which preceded the dancing with our stars in this area and we pulled it off in three different nights in De Pere, Green Bay, and Appleton, and eight different charities. Money was raised for eight different charities for that. Uh, again, the phenomenal Brian Danzinger donated a tremendous amount of his time because one of his many, many skills is a dance instructor. Of course. And so he was you know, teaching the stars, and I had uh, Harry Sidney, and uh, just forgive me, um, the names are, I'm drawing a blank, I guess I'm getting a little stage fright because... You told me that we have more than 10 people listening. Yeah. But anyways, we raised uh, thousands of dollars. And, and it was also seven of the eight were local charities. And then one of my pet charities is uh, This Life Cambodia. As you know, I did volunteer work in Cambodia. I was teaching at uh, the schools. It was actually called the Poverty School. They don't have an educational system over there. Rich kids, obviously, are sent out of the country. The majority of the populace, there's no education. So I worked on that as a volunteer, and I also worked on the uh, um, biomass water filtration project, project while I was there. Um, and so that, that was the one charity that wasn't local. Everything else was. Um, but, again, it was something that 100% of what I raised went directly to Cambodia, went directly to the people. Phenomenal. So, yeah, I was very happy about that, too. Um, another one I was really proud of, my son organized, Rock for Food. Mm. And uh, the Ramada Inn donated their, uh, actually two areas because he had four bands, including he got one band to come up from uh, Chicago as the headliner. And the entry was two canned goods, and he raised several hundred pounds of food. And he was a sophomore in high school at that time. It was conceived by him. Normally, you know, you got the parent that's like, oh, this is my child. No, it was sure. conceived by him. He did ask for some help, but he definitely did all the legwork. He got all the bands himself. And like I said, I was shocked, <laughs> you know, some of the bands. And so he takes after his mom. Very much so, yes, yes. Um, but that was one of my most. Uh, I was very proud of that. So, oh, uh, uh, pints for pounds. Uh, again, we did uh, a lot of. Uh, I like raising food for the local shelters. Okay. And sometimes uh, the caring closet cleanout. We did. Uh, a friend of mine from uh, Norway had done that. And I followed her example, and people like Rick Steber, um, again, Brian Danzinger. Uh, there's a lot of people that got involved, and we had 32 different pickup points throughout the greater area. And we brought in just an amazing amount of uh, clothing that we donated to the Golden House and also to um, Salvation Army. So we were able to help out. I mean, we literally had truckloads. Rick Steber had a, a, a big truck and went around to all the bank mutual locations. We had them in City Hall. We had them in, in like I said, a lot of locations throughout the area. And the look on their, the people's faces when we brought those truckloads in, they were so happy to get those clothes. And people also donated, I remember it was a fairly large box of hotel uh, soaps and shampoos mm. and whatnot. And, of course, the Golden House 
Yeah, that's very needed stuff. So. Sure. Um, I like doing things like that. When, when somebody's got a true need and you can help out and make an immediate impact, those are the types of things that I like to do. So, and the reason that I want to ask the, that isn't just to embarrass you, but I think you are infectious. And I think that you're doing a... No, no, the doctor said that the shots... Uh, do, oh, see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a comedy show. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, uh, for real, I think um, getting the word out of the things that you are passionate about and involved in, I think people would like to be involved in those things just because you're there. Um, Is that so, because I own a brewery? No. Ah. No, no. Uh, in spite of that, for some people. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, your beer sucks. <laughs> Thank you. No. That's just because I want it. That uh, $26 on that, that, sponsor- that sponsorship, huh? <laughs> 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 no, that bourbon barrel stuff blows my mind. Thank you. It's, it's amazing. It. It's amazing. And I, I, I like, I've liked all of them. Uh, and I don't remember the one that I liked uh, least. You had a winter one that was great. It's so many great ones. Yeah. Oh, we're going to bring the winter one back. Yes. In winter? That's our thought. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. You have any other uh, uh, nonprofit kind of things that you want to talk about? Uh, because I, I really do feel like um, the people that are listening to this, they want to know what, like, so maybe going forward, like what things do you want to be involved in? What things... Uh, I don't know. Where, where do you see needs? One of the biggest things that I'm involved in is uh, HUA, helping out our American heroes. And uh, William Cocken, who does a phenomenal job, they just had nine vets from World War II all the way through the current um, conflicts. Mm-hmm. And they all went skydiving. So mm-hmm. a former World War II paratrooper. And... I think that a lot of people realize that vets are having a lot of issues. Um, In November, I did that 22-mile march Mm -hmm. where I raised funds for veteran suicide. 22 uh, veterans commit uh, suicide every day. Mm -hmm. Um, Did a thing at Rum Runners uh, about a month ago Mm -hmm. and raised, you know, basically 100% of the profits went to HUA. Um, That's the one that I've really been focusing on for the past uh, couple months big supporter of what they're trying to do. They uh, did things like a uh, vet came back, a uh, wounded vet came back. They built a full uh, play set in his backyard for his kids because he was no longer able to build such things. Mm. And so they raised the don- raised donations and then did the work. So, and they're all vets themselves. You know, basically vets helping vets. But again, their big focus is um, spreading awareness about veteran suicide and trying to help locally, you know, make life a little bit better for those that have suffered a very terrible cost. So I'm not a vet. And, um, so I feel always a little bit, um, a little bit ashamed of that, I guess, in a way, oh, but, no, no. um, but, uh, I am extremely thankful, uh, that I'm able to do ridiculous things like this, uh, because of them. And uh, so um, those are yeah. hugely important to me. Uh, you know, we joke that, uh, you know, that I'm a, uh, an anarchist, you know, but uh, very much not so for, uh, for veterans. I, I, don't, uh, I don't think we can spend enough uh, for real. And I think that that money is well spent rather than like pouring money on education where I think that sometimes it can be ill spent. Right. Uh, I, we're, we're coming up way short for our, for our, uh, for our veterans. We really are. I agree. And you know, the saying the greatest generation always yeah. applies to the world war two veterans. Yeah. Justifiably so. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, and again, having 12 exchange kids, I went to 12 mm-hmm. high school graduations and Denmark high school, has at each graduation ceremony all the kids that have signed up for it to go in the service and they all stand up and everyone gives them very polite applause wow i've never seen that oh yeah yeah and then what blows me away was you know again i've been doing this for years now even in the height of iraq or the worst of afghanistan these kids volunteered knowing that they're going into a war how brave is that? An 18-year-old kid says, I'm going into war. 
And these weren't I, these kids were you know the football players. They you know they weren't the kids that weren't getting jobs at McDonald's. Right. You know, hard workers that especially out in Denmark, leaving the family farm. You know, and just because they were doing it because they thought it was right. And to me, I think we can apply. You know, just the, maybe the bravest or you know the greatest to um, something to just acknowledge how brave these kids are. And then yeah, they're coming back broken. You know, a lot of these kids, you can see their physical uh, disabilities, but, you know, as you know, I was at Mayo Clinic there for a little bit, and you look at some of these guys, and they look fine, but there's a reason. There's 22 veteran suicides daily, yeah. every day, seven days a week, 365. It's 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 a terrible shame. Um, you're right. And sometimes people go, you know, we're doing a lot for vets. We're doing a lot for vets. No. Yeah, go sit in the hospital. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, go sit in the hospital for one hour, and you will think that right. we need to double what we're doing. And uh, so uh, just so happened that uh, my dad came over yesterday. He had the afternoon off. Um, and uh, uh, we usually don't get on that subject, but we were, we were taught he was a uh, Vietnam era. Uh, and he volunteered, uh, not, he didn't go to Vietnam, but he, you know, he volunteered to go into the service and, uh, he was in the air force initially, and then he was in the national guard. And, uh, um, you know, he was talking when he was in, I think he was talking high school that, uh, I don't, I don't remember the exact details of, of what he was trying to say. Um, it's my dad and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> who listens to their dad? Yes. No, no, I, uh. I, I was sort of uh, my son. No, oh, oh. just kidding. <laughs> Great Mike, kid. Michael's awesome, I, yeah. you know. But uh, I'm I'm a bad son, I guess. But he was talking about I think when he was in high school, and I, I, the detail was I don't know if if it was a survey in high school or college, whatever. But um, he said nine out of ten, more than nine out of ten of you know of people said you know the kids in the school said that they uh, supported you know going to the service. Nine out of ten. He went. Uh, he was in Sturgeon Bay, and he was just prior to you know where everybody thinks of like all of this mass you know uh against the war the you know, anti-war the, movement yeah. in the 60s yeah and i think even then i think even at its peak it was probably closer to half you know b based on what he's saying and uh uh so that was sort of an eye-opener to me um i don't think that that's so true right now but part of it was the gi bill you know he went so he could go to college and you know now we just uh, you know we make it a little too easy for kids to borrow, and then they get into trouble, and it's probably going to bankrupt their country. It's a big, big disaster waiting to happen. I oh think. yeah, we but, could talk. That'd be a full hour too. Right, right, right. Well, you're going to be back. Um, but uh, ruh, ruh. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what to expect. I, I think it'll loaded be, for bear. I think it'll be popular by popular demand. Well, and, yeah, uh, to, to your point. I was a fifth of five kids, yeah. and you know my parents had a great college plan. Have fun. So, yeah, I went. That's the reason I joined. Yeah. yeah and there were little flare-ups here and there, but, you know, nothing compared to... I didn't expect to go to, like, in Iraq or in Afghanistan. Again, so when I talk about my service and then I look at what these guys do, I keep my mouth shut and I'm humbled. Yeah, the only well, thing that's greater that I've ever experienced, and uh, looking at the clock there. No, we're good. Was when the it always goes a little over. Uh, when yeah. the Lavalette Foundation had the Medal of Honor winners here in Green Bay in 2007, and we had a Medal of Honor winner. I, my corporation uh, sponsored a table, and so we had a Medal of Honor winner at our table, and I got to meet mm -hmm. all the living Medal of Honor winners. There were one or two that couldn't make it for uh, medical reasons, and that was truly the most humbling experience of my life, and I don't say that just oh you're supposed to say it. no these guys yeah, i was talking to one of them and i said you guys are so calm and you're so humble he said well if you think about it we should be dead everyone in here should be dead so that was kind of like wow yeah and well i even I, that's infectious though because i feel like the uh the the humbleness uh that's not the right word but um i think you're trying to say humidity <laughs> Humidity. 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 That was it. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, With an L. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, boy, I'll get better. Um, but talking to my dad, talking to you, and uh, and I mean, and this is, I mean, many people, and very intelligent people, very uh, uh, active people that volunteered go you know went into the service they're like no i'm no don't look at me look at these other people 
Um, that's amazing. My dad was, you know, telling me he was uh, um, uh, lucky and uh, um, and he said maybe a little smart because you know he volunteered instead of waiting to be drafted. So, so you, got to, yep. you know, so then he got to, he got to pick. But then you know you can tell that he feels a little bit um, lucky, you know, lucky and um, maybe even a little embarrassed about that. And you know, here's me sitting back and you know I cry about you know people making fun of my hair. Um, it's it's not even. In a, in I'm real like, sorry about what I said about your hair. <laughs> now didn't realize you <laughs> late at night. Elliot's crying. <laughs> well, you know, I curl up in, instead of E dog night. I'm going to start calling you E crying at night. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, anyway, uh, I I I never I feel like I can never say enough about about veterans and I can never do I can't do anything. Uh, you know, raise a few dollars. Psh, oh, I, you know, I, wait, I can't wait. do anything. This is just one of your many projects. When I was first came in, you know, we were chatting and it's like the reason I'm here is because again, of your charisma or everything that you've done in here, you've helped so many people so many times. You know, you're one of those people that you almost count on before you even ask and so when you asked it's like of course i will my goodness all the things all the things you've done if you know for the community all the times you've helped me all the times you've helped everyone around me i'll be glad to help you in any way i can wow you're making me turn white (laughs) more than red (laughs) that's the color after red (laughs) uh okay so so uh, is he saying he's white hot? I, I, I don't is he, know. Is he bragging? I, I don't <laughs> <laughs> Well, we know that. Is the picture that's why, Are you going to be wearing the kilt in the picture? This, that's why next time we can't do video because then, oh, people would just do it. They play with the sound off and they just check me out. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> um, no, no, very much not. I looked like a job of the hut in one of the pictures, but I try to make my guests look good. But it was, you know, when he was working out, it was those years. <laughs> Job of the hut. Yeah, he let himself go at the end, but you know, nice. Uh, you get a little bit older, very much. You don't yeah. have to impress people. Well, you know, in the one movie he was moving around, and then in the other movie he couldn't move. I was uh, see, I, yeah, he let himself go. Yeah, and look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what that was all about. Uh, I think that was the difference of thirty years of computer generated animation. I, true, I know, I know, but or, that, but it's still funny. Yes, I'm gonna go just to, laugh at it. Nick. I, I, I'm My gonna go goodness. to Spaceball and say it was pizza. <laughs> there you go, it was Pizza the Hut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys. All right. So uh, the the question that I kind of close with, and there's a million things. I you know this is the the struggle that I have. So when I look like I'm thinking, it's not like I can't come up with a question. Oh, it's that quiz. It said I. Have to think of what's the math. Don't be math. Don't be math. Don't be math. What's the best of these ten questions I can ask? No. So I always close. And if you haven't actually listened, and I'm surprised that you didn't, because um, I have some excellent guests that were, you know, before I, you. I, I tell you what, um, I'll listen to everyone right up to myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you'll listen to this, and you're going to play it for your. You got to play it for Michael anyway. Yeah. Um, but uh, I always ask everybody when they come back as a co-host who they would like to have on the other side of the table. Is that one of those? If you could have dinner with anybody in the world, sort of. But but I do want so like imaginary so, counts too. So I do kind of caveat that a little bit. Because um, like I say imaginary, I'll have they you. have to be people that uh, you know well, or that I know, or you know that we mutually know that kind. Of, you know, so it shouldn't be like a complete shock to them, preferably. But you know, it could be a stretch. You know, um, so I'll 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 tell you some of the ones that have been brought up. Aaron Rodgers is brought up every episode, and I think that's a stretch. Yeah, um, I was I wasn't going there. Um, well, gee, thanks. Uh, no, um, but now, uh, now his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, uh, really, nobody said that. They, oh. they have not. They have not. So that's interesting. Uh, so okay, so that's we, we can we can pencil that in as one of yours. But uh, uh, well, she's gonna be in. Don't uh, be jealous, Aaron. She's, she's gonna be in the X Men. So, you know, Max will be excited. So X-Men and on Ideas by <laughs> I think, Elliot. I think oh, talk about the pinnacle I, the, of the, her career. The, the top. Yes. Well, you know, she's been in Maple and with, with a, yes, <laughs> That's the reason. I, I don't even know who she is, but I absolutely love her because right. of that Letterman when she talked about right. turning down a Hollywood call because she was in line at Maplewood Meets. I said, this girl has her head screwed on right. Right, right. Um, so some of the other people that were uh, that were brought up, the very first one uh, was Donna Schmidt, uh, Jim Schmidt's wife. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, that kind of 
laid the groundwork for. Oh, so uh, it has to be local. So it like, no, can't, can't be like no. a Scott Walker. No. It, in, then, so, I mean, it could be. I mean, I think, I, he'll, I could, think he'll have some I'd, free time I'd, I'd next up, year. Yeah, I'd, be, I'd, I'd, I'd be going full <laughs> WWE on him anyways. <laughs> With love and kindness in my heart. He's you a know, good for, guy. For all, yes, yes. Um, so, uh, and some of the other ones, uh, Brian Danzinger was mentioned. Uh, of course, yes. Uh, Brian is such a, a Brent was mentioned to the multiple times. <laughs> um, so the low hanging fruit are they have been plucked. I would do somebody like Mike Telsrow, who's the Wisconsin Veterans Museum director. Wow. Former director of the National Railroad Museum here in town. Okay. Uh, and former Rotarian with myself. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sticking on that theme, but and then again, Aaron Rodgers' girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so those are it. So Mike, it. Mike, if you're listening, the pressure's on. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice. No, just um, there's there's a tremendous amount of people who have contributed so much to this community. I mean, again, that's why I keep coming back. I can walk outside and throw a stone, yeah. and then apologize after hitting somebody, and then say, "Hey, you know, you want to be on the a podcast with me?" Right. <laughs> so, so, is that well, we, you want to do that right now and take a little break and come back? Mm. Please uh, exit the property first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the disclaimer. Yes, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez. Uh, all right. So, we good? We're that good. a wrap? Yeah. Unless you got any other questions you want to ask me. Uh, a million. So you're going to be back. Um, so you want to talk about your your things that you brought? Uh, well, I did bring the kilt. Thank, yeah. Thanks again, Phil Danen. So you guys will see that in the picture on Facebook, I guess. I guess. And <laughs> what we could do is put it on eBay, not mm-hmm. the kilt, because Phil Danen owns us, but if you don't contribute, we'll post pictures of ourselves wearing this kilt. Ooh. Well, how are they going to... And di- I did have a dry clean before I wore it after Phil did. <laughs> Both of you wearing the one kilt? <laughs> I'm not... So yeah, and, and, and once the picture's out there, it's out there. Yeah, you know. You can't stop the signal. <sighs> I'll, 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 I'll think about this some more. Okay. Right. Yeah, that, so I, I, the then I brought, a little I, I brought you the brand new... Oh, those are... Design so beautiful. Chatterhouse... Beautiful. ...brewery shirt designed by Michael Taylor. It, it, I can tell. Yep. It's beautiful. And thank you. And then, of course, I brought some Chatterhouse Ale for sampling purposes. Nice. Okay, I bought a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. I'm taking the rest of the <laughs> afternoon off. Okay. So, uh, oh, do I have to play the oh, last Yeah, track? you're playing music I, today. Okay. So oh, you, you I don't have the computer. what I'm doing now. What? We could have talked about Cinevis and how I'm doing experiential media and I'm traveling all over the country and it's, we didn't. It's your show. That was uh, your job. No, we're we're at 107 minutes or an uh, hour and seven minutes. <laughs> you yes. hate me. He's good at he's good at math. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice when minutes. you were gonna? Yeah, you were doing the uh, pop quiz. I went no math, no math, no math. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. The, old, the old no whammies. I was doing the no math. So let's see here. I think we're gonna play when the stars go blue. And do we? To, hey, 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 do do Elliot and I really have to dance? You don't have to. Uh, yeah, because he gets a little handsy. <laughs> you know, on the intro, on the intro music, he got a little handsy when we were dancing. But he said it was the rules. Yeah, and it's his podcast. So. Uh, well, it's it's actually Terry's show. And uh, for the record, uh, I have a scar on my nipple, <laughs> <laughs> and it's all because of that guy. It's a scar. It's a permanent scar. Emotional. So uh, emotional. Scar. So again, one more time. Thank you, Terry Taylor. Thank you, and I, thank you very much for having me here. I, uh, this was fun. I so really appreciate it. If you want to get some uh, kick-ass beer from Chatterhouse Brewery, they would do what? How would they get a hold of you? Uh, either on the website chatterhousebrewery.com or on Facebook, or just go down to Connections on George Street and Pier, or the Rum Runners on Broadway in Green Bay, or just start demanding it at the bar you go to. Say nice. hey. We got some really good beer in the area. Why aren't you carrying it? That's a great idea. There you I are. Would, I would second that. All right. So this is When the Stars Go Blue, again, from Band of Seahorses, who played at the Farmer's Market Battle of the Bands the other night. And, uh, oh, don't forget to go on iTunes and give me five stars. Don't forget to go on St- Stitcher and give me five stars on there for the Ideas by Elliot podcast. Thanks. Here it goes. Dancing with the evening sky Dancing with 
you wouldn't show you